Hi, I'm Dr. Christiane Northrup, an OBGYN physician and authority on everything that can go right with your body. And I'm here to tell you how to transform your health and truly flourish while making your life easy. Insulin resistance has become a huge problem in our culture, and it can lead to many of the chronic health problems we see every day, including obesity, type 2 diabetes, heart disease, and polycystic ovary syndrome. It's also linked to high blood pressure, high cholesterol, thyroid problems, muscle loss, fat gain, fatty liver, and also breast, endometrial, and other cancers. And insulin resistance has even been implicated in Alzheimer's disease, which is sometimes called type 3 diabetes. In addition, did you know that insulin resistance can also cause many of the symptoms that most women attribute to menopause? In this video, I'm going to share with you how you can reverse insulin resistance. First, what is insulin resistance? You need to understand what insulin is to know what insulin resistance is. Insulin is a hormone made by your pancreas. It's a storage hormone. It stores sugar as fat. We always have low circulating levels in our bodies. But when insulin is out of balance and you have too much, it has a cascading effect on all of your hormones. The result is abnormal blood sugar. High insulin levels can make you feel tired, bloated, and cause sugar cravings. The more insulin you have circulating in your body, the harder it becomes to lose weight and burn fat. It kind of locks it into place. Insulin resistance occurs when insulin is released by the pancreas, but your body doesn't know how to use it properly. It causes blood sugar levels to stay high instead of going down into the normal range. This can occur if you consistently eat too many of the wrong kind of carbohydrates or if you're under a lot of stress. Now, these are the risk factors for developing insulin resistance. Some include a family history of diabetes, gestational diabetes, an apple shape that's more weight around your upper, your shoulders and your middle, polycystic ovarian syndrome, a diet high in refined carbohydrates, a sedentary lifestyle, a body mass index greater than 29, the use of antidepressants, especially the SSRIs like Prozac, or the use of steroid medications like prednisone. Also, holding on to fear and anger will produce some of those hormonal changes. And when held on too long, these things create, these emotions create chemical reactions that do not support your health. So how to tell if you're insulin resistant? First, this is easy. Find your waist hip ratio. Measure your hips at the widest part and then your natural waist. Divide the waist measurement by the hip measurement. For women, the ratio should be no more than 0.8. The greater it is, the greater the risk for insulin resistance. For men, the ratio is 1.0. Also get your fasting blood glucose done and a fasting insulin test. Your doctor can order these. You should fast for 12 hours, then get the blood drawn. Then eat a meal and get the second blood drawn. This is called a glucose tolerance test. Your fasting blood glucose of 100 to 125 milligrams per deciliter is considered, even though it's normal, it's in the pre-diabetes range and you're heading toward insulin resistance. Your fasting insulin should be under five micro units per milliliter. Also get your cholesterol checked. Low HDL indicates the beginning of insulin resistance. Also do a skin check. Those darkened patches, those little skin tags, those indicate insulin resistance. You can look for this on your neck, elbows, knees, and armpits. And the skin tags can also be associated, as I said, with insulin resistance because it's a growth hormone. Now, how to reverse insulin resistance because that's what you want to do. There are so many things you can do to reverse it. It's not a sentence. You can lose weight. Easier said than done, but we'll get into that. Your body can better respond to insulin when you decrease your total body fat. See if a low carbohydrate, moderate protein, moderate fat diet works for you. Jason Fung 
F-U-N-G, has done great research on this. He's an expert on intermittent fasting. Now, let me tell you how to do that. Intermittent fasting just means going 12 hours every day without eating. You know how easy that is? So that's a fast. As you get good at it, you can stop eating at night after your last meal and then not eat until noon the next day. That will lower insulin because a 12 hour, it takes 12 hours to bring your insulin level to zero. And when your insulin level is zero, you start burning fat as fuel. And that's what you wanna do. Another tip is eat only until full. Usually it takes 20 minutes for your satiety to register in your brain. So eat more slowly. Many people don't know how it feels and eat past satiety, particularly if they're under stress. This is a big one and I want you to try it because it can be very easy. Don't eat between meals. Begin to notice how often you snack because again, you've got to bring your insulin level down and you do that by just not eating between meals. You'll get good at that, but I want you to notice how many times you reach for a snack. It's usually just to respond to stress or the food is around. Then, release unwanted emotions. This can do wonders for losing unwanted pounds. I've seen women lose 10 pounds after a good cry. I'm not kidding. The other thing is move your body. Being sedentary is a risk factor for so many health problems and regular exercise adds seven years to your life. So just start by walking. And then you can do cardio, you know, an elliptical trainer, resistance training, stretching. Basic prescription is 30 minutes, three to five times per week. That could mean running in place and dancing while you're watching TV. But don't over-exercise. I see so many women at the gym that are not losing weight and they're over-exercising and it's increasing their cortisol and their stress, which increases insulin, and then it locks the fat into place. So that doesn't work either. You also need to get enough sleep. When you lose sleep, your levels of the appetite-stimulating hormone ghrelin increase, and that can stimulate cortisol production and decrease your ability to burn your blood sugar as fuel. Even one night of sleep deprivation can increase insulin resistance by up to 33%, which is why shift workers often have problems losing weight. So you need to reduce stress, which you can do just with breathing through your nose, um, doing a little meditation, taking a daily nap. Because remember, consistently elevated levels of cortisol from stress can lead to high blood sugar, weight gain, and diabetes, even when you're not eating too much. So you may want to get a cortisol test. It's called a Dutch test, and that measures your cortisol throughout the day. Try walking in nature. Do meditation, yoga, or read a great book. And say goodbye to bad habits. That would be alcohol and smoking. And by the way, I know that those bad habits are helping you to deal with emotions, but I want you to deal with them directly. So. For more inspirational tips, visit my blog, exploredrnorthrop.com, where you will find wisdom for your body, mind, and spirit, and discover the connection between your thoughts, your beliefs, your physical health, and your life circumstances. And remember, you are in the driver's seat of your health, and achieving your health can be easier than you think.